Without giving the reason why, AEW roster member Buddy Matthews told an indie crowd Saturday that he needs to go away for a while. Following his match for Fight Life Pro Wrestling against J.T. Dunn in Rhode Island, Matthews told the crowd that he was, quote, going to be the bearer of some bad news. He said the House of Black had some issues lately, and after thanking the fans for being members of the House, he said the following, Unfortunately, I, like some of the other members, need to go away for a while. I need to recalibrate. I need to figure out some things. As my brother Malachi once said, this isn't goodbye. This is see you later. So uh, then, of course, there was a lot of stuff out on the Internet. What's going on with Buddy Matthews? And I, 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 I was gone all weekend. I was at the shoot bunkhouse. My super followers know all about it. But the fact of the matter is, I'm a little bit behind on everything that was said about whatever on the Internet. So uh, it may have been reported somewhere that he asked for his release or he wanted his release or he got his release. I don't know if any of that is true, okay? I do know that something was reported somewhere, and uh, Buddy Matthews then, uh, he tweeted something like, lies. I can't can't remember what it was. It's all irrelevant, okay? Here's the deal. This is a thing of late with with AEW, which is kind of interesting because when AEW first began, they kind of prided themselves on being transparent about everything. And uh, now, fake, I believe, is what he said. Now, it's like a complete 180. And, you know, they've they've had locker room meetings where they've asked people not to leak things. And uh, there's also, you know, one of the big issues, which people are still going on and on and on about is, well, why did the young bucks, why did the EVPs, why did this person leak, 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 leak? And uh, as I've mentioned many times, you know, I've... I've uh, made a lot of predictions about AEW. And I'm not saying all of them came true, because they didn't. But a a fair number of them came true. And uh, those have nothing to do with leaks. It's because when you book in a logical manner, it's usually pretty damn obvious where things are going. And when they go there, yeah, I was right. But all I did was look at what they were doing. It was like I got a leak. And so now we're in this situation where nobody's talking about anything. And, you know, you're you're completely if you run a W, if you're Tony Khan, you are you have every right to do whatever you want. If you want to just keep everything under wraps and not tell anybody anything about anything, you're welcome to do so. But when you do that and then people begin to speculate, I mean, you can get mad about it if you want, but it's sort of like, why? I mean, Here's the thing with with the House of Black. The House of Black was named after Malachi Black. Malachi Black has vanished. He's disappeared. He's gone. And if you're a viewer of the program and you're not following everything, now there's a group named after a guy who has vanished. Okay? Now... If you just want to do it like that, like the guy's gone, now it's the House of Black because we all don't like color, whatever, that's all fine and good. But if you do that, you can't really get mad that people speculate about why the guy vanished. Let's say Mike here. Let's get a picture of Mike. Suncast, show us Mike. Let's say that one day Mike is just not on the show anymore. He's gone. And I never mention... Who, what, when, where, why, anything, okay? That's within my right. I don't need to tell you where Mike went. But if Mike drops off the face of the planet and every all of the viewers start acting like, what happened to Mike? Is Mike dead? Did Brian kill Mike? Did Brian fire Mike? Did Was it because Mike said this, Mike said that? I can't get mad about it. If I don't tell you anything and you start speculating, that's right? So anyway, there's been a lot of this of of late in AEW where, you know, injuries, people are injured, but they don't tell us who's injured. People just vanish. Then fans get upset about the booking, like, oh, how come this person, you know, they were getting a push and now they're gone. Oh, the booking sucks. Well, listen, if you don't want people to say the booking sucks, then if someone disappears due to injury, 
you don't need to specifically say what the injury is, but you can say, hey, they're out with an injury. Hey, they got hurt. Hey, this person is no longer with the company. Like I said, whatever you want to do, it's your company. But then you can't get mad if people speculate because you don't tell anybody anything. So anyway, I don't know what's going on with Buddy Matthews. He said he's got to step away. And then somebody reported something that he said is fake. I don't know what's going on. But maybe I'll speculate. I'll try not to. Would you like to talk about his contract status? Well, I would like to say one thing about contracts. I actually thought people were going to get really mad at me because of Observer Radio last night. But uh, I, I haven't heard it yet. Maybe they just don't care anymore. But here's the deal, everybody. If you are a wrestler and you want to go to AEW or WWE and you agree to perform there for three years and then a year in, you decide you don't want to be there anymore, in my opinion, well, you're going to be there for two more years. You signed that deal. Now, I don't want to hear, well, you know, the guy I like is back in charge of WWE, so I want to go back. I've changed my... You signed a three-year deal. That's it. Now, the first thing everybody says is, well, you know, in WWE, when you sign a three-year deal, they expect you to stay there three years, but they can cut you in 90 days. That's horrible. That's not fair. Well, listen, if you want to argue that that's not a nice thing to do, if you want to argue that if you were Triple H, Nick Khan, whoever, you wouldn't do that, you can argue that. But you cannot argue it's not fair. Because you get a piece of paper, you get a contract, you hand it to your lawyer, your lawyer reads it and explains everything to you. You know going in that that's the way this contract is structured. Of course it's a one-sided contract. Have you ever signed a contract for anything? A contract is always going to be one-sided to the person that's given you the contract. If you don't like it, you don't sign it. But once you sign it, you've committed to it. That's my thought on these contracts. And, oh, I want out now. Oh, you know, Hunter's back. Here's the other thing with Hunter being back. Bro, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Right? When you That's signed true. an AEW contract because Vince drove you nuts and you couldn't work under this guy, yeah, you didn't know that he was going to be embroiled in scandal and removed and he's out of there. You didn't know that. Well, you know what else you don't know? You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I'm not saying that Hunter is going to have a serious health issue, but he did, and that's something that happened. And I don't know how he's going to feel with the stress of this job in a year. He may need to step away. Someone else may replace him. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So you can't agree to a three-year deal and sign the contract, and then something happens and you go, well, I changed my mind. You signed the deal. Now, if I were running the company, I would not say, well, you can go home. I'm going to freeze your deal. And if you want to go home for two years for the rest of the contract, yeah, I got to pay you. It sucks. But you're here for two more years. Then you can go and do whatever you want. The date that's on your contract, go do whatever you want. But until then, you agreed. So I don't know what to tell you. There's a lot of moving pieces off of this piece, too. And I think one of the reasons that people aren't jumping on you is because the last time somebody jumped on you about this, it was about Sasha and Naomi. And the culture of the places is different. I believe that there's a lot of difference between those two things. And when it comes to Malachi Black, he sounds like he's got some legitimate issues with AEW and things that he was told. And I'm not sure what exactly is right there. And maybe in the future, we'll find out from both sides exactly what went down between the two that soured the relationship so much. But with Buddy Matthews, and I'm a guy that traditionally falls on labor and, you know, that type of side, this just very much seems like you just don't want to be there and you came and you signed a contract and now saw a change somewhere else and instead of trying to outperform your contract you're just saying i want to get out of here so maybe we'll find out more but i think these all of these situations including agents and lawyers for some of these young guys you know getting the right ones that can all be discussed later on back in moments we're live Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. Well, here's the show. Can I say one more thing? Just one more thing. Just on as it relates to the agents and the lawyers. 
like get one that understands wrestling or find somebody that understands the entertainment field. And I'm not saying that in this case that that's got anything to do with this, but it's 2022 and like, you've got to know what you're assigning and you need people around you that can get you to people on your way up through this business. Like you have got to stay aware and you have got to find the people that will have your best interests in mind and that can help navigate you through these things and then have been part of the WWE. That's one of the things when people talk about going to WWE and, you know, all oh, the waste time there. This No, it's probably good to see what the worldwide leader does in some cases. Ben Carter being a great example, the kid who trained under Seth Rollins, who's now Nathan Frazier in NXT. Like a lot of people, like he's throwing his, his look how hot he is on the indies. He's throwing this away. He should be in AEW. Look. Unless his body falls apart on him within three years, he'll still have the opportunity to go to AEW. But he'll actually understand what the top level of wrestling is and dealing with a lot of politics and a lot of issues that you won't have to deal with in other places. AEW, obviously, has got some of the same things, but almost anywhere else you go, you have a wealth of knowledge that now you have that you can help utilize and give to others with. You've got to understand, you've got to get representation, and you've got to get lawyers that actually know how to do these deals. Not everybody's going to be Brock Lesnar with a no-cut deal, but maybe in this new era, you have a good agent, you have a good lawyer, you negotiate things like, okay, instead of the standard 90 days, how about a little less money for a little more security and give me 120? Things like that. OK, there are standard contracts. If you just scribble your name across it and hand it back because you're happy to be there or because your lawyer doesn't understand what's going on. I mean, that's kind of on you. I mean, unfortunately, even with the MLW cases that came up with Mance Warner and other people like I know these contracts are all one sided. But as Brian said at the beginning of the show, almost every contract you get from somebody is one sided unless you've got a lot of leverage. And most people don't have a lot of leverage when well, they're dealing that's with the a corporation. Thing. You can have the best agent you want, and you ain't going to have no leverage if you're signing a deal with WWE. And the fact of the matter is, if you don't want to sign with WWE, don't go to WWE. And if Brian, you don't like that, and, any of these contracts, then you can go work at the auto body shop or whatever. But one of the ways that you can help your case in the future is to actually, for a case, and again... I don't know what other outside things are, and I, if he's got issues or whatever when it comes to Buddy Matthews, but, like, your best case for yourself would be outperform whatever you can do whenever you get on TV. Outperform your contract as if it was real sports and give them a reason for later on. Because if the MJ, let's say the MJF case is true, that he got a bump in his money. Right. Let's let's say that that's true. His contract was not extended out, but he did get uh, uh, some extra money. That's because he, whatever they signed him to, that guy has outperformed that deal and they want to keep him happy. That's the best thing you can do if you're in a case like Buddy Matthews, where you sign to see what's going on with WWE. Well, goddamn, I'm going to make myself so valuable anytime anybody sees me that when I go back to WWE, I actually have some reason. I have some leverage because AEW wants to keep me because I've been so good and WWE is looking at me like a, a gem I could take. I just this is a case when it comes to Matthews that, again, looking at it in comparison to other cases, you just seemingly got a call. And, you know, whether he was on that list of people who may have been contacted by WWE or not, frankly, this just looks like, well, I'm not happy here. And unlike Malachi Black, you were not the leader of that group. So he may have been promised something that he's upset about that he didn't get. But that doesn't really affect you at all. Because they just signed Buddy Matthews, guy who would work with New Japan. And I really like him as a wrestler. I really, really do. But this just seems like a case where you signed something and now wound out because they made a change up there. Well, and as Brian said, things could change tomorrow up there, you know, for whatever reason. Well, like I said at the very beginning of the show, we don't even know if he doesn't want out. We don't even know if he wants out or not because no one says anything. And I will go back to what I said, and that is if no one's saying anything— then you can't be upset about people speculating. That's my point. I will say one last thing, because people keep bringing up independent contractor. Listen, this is not an argument for or against whether wrestlers should be independent contractors. It, it doesn't matter in what I'm about to say. What matters is it's been decades and nothing has changed. So do not sign your contract thinking that you are an independent contractor in, an, in a certain way 
and you're going to be able to do this or that, okay? Maybe someday this will be challenged. Maybe someday WWE will have to redo the way that they do business. But it has been decades. They're doing business the exact same way. You're listed as an independent contractor, but you can't do anything without them giving you the A-OK. It doesn't matter whether it's right or wrong. It's the way things go. So when you sign that contract, when you see that contract that says you're an independent contractor, but you can't do anything unless we tell you, if you sign it, you can't do anything unless they tell you. If you'd like to challenge it, you're welcome to. But it has been challenged before, and it didn't do any good. So you either you either read the contract and presume that you're going to have to do what's written in that contract that you're signing, or don't sign it. Whether yeah. it's right or wrong is irrelevant. That's a different argument. That's a different argument. When you sign it, you can't just quit and then 90 days later go wherever you want because the contract says you can't do that and you signed it. That's why people in other businesses will sneer at the whole, hey, brother, 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 b b BS that takes place because if everybody decided we're not going to show up on Wednesday because maybe it's time that we bring in a union that we can actually negotiate with and we can actually make some moves in this industry with – then maybe Tony would have to do something. Tony Khan, who knows a lot about dealing with unions as he has to deal with them in real sports. Same thing with WWE. Sure, it's easy to say, we'll just replace you guys with a whole bunch of other new guys. Yeah, that's possible. That's the risk that you take. But unless you go out and actually take the risk to do something like that, who is the Kurt Flood? You know, I guess in wrestling, the Kurt Flood was Jesse Ventura. But then nobody ever came after him to help do anything about anything. So you continue to put yourselves in these positions when you don't have any representation in any organization to go, we need to change this business at its core. And until you can do that, well, tough. Unfortunately, that's the way it goes because you've had the chance to unionize and you've had the chance to get together and you don't. Well, looks like I got to do more of a Q&A. What about Sasha and Naomi, everyone said? Listen, Different situation. No, hold on. If you want to quit and not go to work, fine. <laughs> but you can't quit and then go to another wrestling promotion. You are bound to the wrestling contract that you signed. If you want to quit WWE and go do some Hollywood stuff or whatever, fine. But you can't quit and then go to AEW. Uh, what about Brock? He, he, uh, he, uh, uh, he won. Different situation. Well, Brock was signed. He wanted to leave. They said fine. They made him sign a 10-year global no compete. He couldn't not only wrestle. He couldn't wrestle. He couldn't fight. Uh, no, it was uh, it was wrestling. Um, MMA. It was K1 because that was the deal at the time with New Japan. Well, and he all went. That stuff. Yeah, I think he went to whatever. The, the, the point of it was, you know, they looked at this and they were like, 10 years, mm -hmm. not going to happen. That's why he won. Yeah. But if you sign a three-year deal and you negotiate, oh, well, okay, I, you know, I want out. It's a conditional release. You can go, but you can't do anything for the remainder of your three-year deal. You ain't going to win in court on that one. But if you, if you say, let's say that uh, Kevin Owens wants out, and he goes, I want out. In fact, I will sign a 30-year no-compete if you let me out. Bro, they ain't holding up in court, even nope. if you agree to a 30-year. <laughs> there's, there's, this is all up to the discretion of the court. And the reality is, the reality is, every judge is different. So the fact of the matter is, Brock could very well have ended up finding a judge that was like, bro, you agreed to a 10-year no-compete worldwide, not doing it. You're going to abide by it. You know, there, there's, there's no, that's why, that's why you have a judge, right? Sometimes a judge will rule in your favor, and sometimes they won't. He happened to find a judge that said, bro, you can't hold him to a 10-year no-compete in any form of combat sports. So he won. He won. That doesn't mean you will win in your particular situation. And the deal with Sasha and Naomi is there was already history there with Sasha and Naomi. We've seen more come out about, you know, since the time they left about what kind of circus was taking place with the guy at the top of the food chain and Vince McMahon and the person that was in charge of them directly in human relations or not human relations, but with John Laurinaitis. And again, we've heard a lot about a lot of the people there and what it was like to work under them. So this situation is different because again, yes, 
they signed a contract. That is what Brian said, and that's what he will hold them to. But there were other different moving pieces there that, you know, again, we don't even know what the whole situation was there. But certainly this is a case a little bit different than Buddy Matthews. And if Buddy wants to go walk down the runway with Sasha and Naomi, more power to him. But I don't think he's going to be able to get out of this AEW deal. And I really don't think AEW should do that because you're going to get into a situation, too, where they're going to take kindness for weakness. If people haven't already done that with Tony Khan and, you know, try to make power moves like this. And it's. Again, we'll have to see moving forward. And Vinny has driven all the way here, and his camera's not working. Oh, cool. Classic. It's pointing at the back of the TV. All Riveting. right. Yep, we go that way. Yeah, nope, I, wrong way, bro. 180 degrees oh, the wrong way. Oh. Yep. We don't need two cameras on me. Hey, hey, there he is. By the way, you need a good nose hair trimming. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.